And so this is a project that we've got with the Oglala Aquifer Project that talks directly about conserving and making the best use of water. In this case, it's rainwater harvesting. What we've got here is a setup where we can catch water in a large container directly off of the roof of this building. This is the uh, Extension Research Center here in Amarillo for Texas AgriLife. Um, lots of roof space, lots of land space. The idea is to make the best use of that water coming off the roof and, and try to demonstrate to the public things that we can do to be very conscious at our homes as well as in the uh, case of this particular project in, in small acreage settings as well. Uh, if you want to walk through it a little bit, what we do here is we start with collecting water obviously off of the roof through a rain gutter system. This building was constructed with rain gutters in mind and so the, the pipe and the conveyance system is internal. We've got outlets here that uh, the water comes out of then through gravity we can force it back up into the top of the tank and fill up our tanks. These tanks are uh, 3,600 gallons. They hold about 3,300 gallons until overflow. Um, this year, in the midst of a drought, we filled three of these tanks, which is approximately 9,000 gallons worth of water on six inches worth of rainfall. So, pretty effective way to capture water. Uh, the next step we want to do is look at how we can convey that water and what we can do with it. In catching rainwater, uh, the way to measure how much water you're going to catch is that in a one inch rainstorm, on every square foot of your roof, you can catch approximately 0.6 gallons of water. So you can start to add that up on a, on a standard house, or in this case a large building. And basically what you end up with is a whole lot of water that's stored, and now you have to figure out something to do with it. One of the easiest things to do with it is to use it in your landscape. Uh, in this case what we've got is we've got some garden plots, some small garden plots. These here modeled after uh, the square foot gardening technique, which is incredibly efficient in terms of water use, as well as uh, plant production, whether it be for a vegetable garden or an ornamental garden, either way. So what we've done is we've taken and, and set up a way to display how you would take water and convey it from these rainwater tanks and then move it over to where you can effectively apply it in a square foot garden setting and then ultimately in a large uh, landscape area and a large garden area. And so what we're looking at here is one of those square foot gardens set up divided foot by foot and then we've got drippers coming in so we can isolate where the water goes to. Unlike a traditional garden where you've got water running down furrows and maybe out of the garden or on the bare surface, um, you can eliminate all of that by, by putting the water directly where the plant can use it. In terms of uh, plant production, this is much more efficient and a much better use of water. And when you start looking at using rainwater for uh, any sort of plant production, you don't have the salts that may be in the water, the EC levels, you don't have the chlorine from city water, etc. And so the plants respond a lot better with that water than what they even would uh, in a, in a regular setting where you're using city water. Now using the square foot gardening technique, what you do is you look at a, a planter box that's about uh, six inches deep. So in this case we built it out of two by sixes, four foot by four foot, and gives you 16 square foot of garden space. Uh, we build the soil in here completely. It's compost, uh, vermiculite, and peat moss combined in, a, in an equal proportion. But that allows us for a good structure. Um, with these square foot gardens, these are set up on elevated beds primarily for people that may have bad backs or bad knees that don't want to get down to garden, as well as folks that may be in a wheelchair or would like to sit while they're gardening. That way this is right at hand's reach. Uh, this is the more inexpensive model here, the standard square foot garden strategy where you just mount it on the ground. In this case, you'll put down a weed cloth, build the plot right over it, and then fill it up, and it's the same exact premise. Our large boxes that you can see in the background there, what we've done, instead of using a 2 by 6 We've used the 2 by 12 and actually filled about half of it with sand and then we'll put this mixture on top of that. The idea being is that when you want to look at potatoes or carrots or uh, radishes or turnips or onions, things that have a, a rooting bulb that you want to harvest, this way you've got plenty of depth so that root uh, can establish and you actually harvest it just as well. Uh, one of the reasons we filled those with sand obviously was expense, but the main reason we filled it with sand is so that the, the water can freely move out of it you don't wind up with saturated conditions or fungal conditions or uh, anything that's going to cause any sort of root rot or plant damage. One of the goals with this large garden though is to compare some inherent inefficiencies with some of the more efficient methods. Now the irrigation method on this is going to be using surface drip. We're going to use a dripper tube that's going to have emitter space down it. We're going to run that down the plant rows. Uh, and we're going to have that on an automated timer. Um, 
and different plants, you know, as the typical garden would be. The idea being is that we're going to try to make this as efficient as possible in water use and then compare it to even the more efficient st styles and strategies just to see how far we can make this rainwater go. I think we'll see this year that uh, we'll have enough water and to spare by what we've captured in our tanks and hopefully the public will be able to see some uh, ways that they can improve gardening at their home as well as improve their water conservation efforts.